Hi, and welcome to the Margie and Lisa show. I'm Margie Wigan. I'm Lisa Jackson. We're, We're glad you're joining us tonight. We have some fun winter topics that we'll be talking about, and we hope that you call in, um, see the subtle hint of the red phone in the <laughs> middle of our table. Oh, <laughs> yes. That phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Yep. So we're going to start with winter safety tips. So we have we had one little snowstorm so far. Yeah. And um, I was watching the kids on the playground who were zipping all over the ice and falling down and skating on their boots and sliding on their bellies. Yeah. So it's coming. It's cold. It's going to be colder tomorrow. Yeah. And um, so winter safety tips. How do people prepare? What do you need to do yeah. to make yourself your home safe? Your travel safe? You were mentioning your car had yeah. a kind of a challenge. Yeah, so like it was interesting. Margie said someone was gonna call in about a car wash and I was like, you know what? Ironically today, <laughs> I've been driving a lot all week and I noticed that like I had this haze of salt on my car and when it reflects in the sun, I had a hard time seeing through it. Yeah. And of course I was picking up my daughter at school so I'm ultra careful. Mm -hmm. I'm always careful driving, but Great. ultra careful. And But I noticed, you know, like I was having a little bit of difficulty seeing through that We glare. actually have Mark on the phone. So can we get back to you in a second? Yeah. All right. Um, so Mark is joining us. Mark, this is Mark Mercer, who is um, power wash. He does under pressure power wash. Hi, Mark. Hi. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm sorry it was last minute. I'm glad you can be with us on the phone. Yeah, my pleasure. So, so yeah, so I own under pressure. So we we do exterior cleaning, but we also do snow and ice management. Perfect. And, uh, most of our business is residential, and we find that. Um, we help homeowners all the time with with ice dam removal using steam but I see, yeah. key things that we try to help our homeowners with is kind of preventative as opposed to uh you know waiting till something happens and then reacting so perfect um, well, one of the things we we do is we advise homeowners to kind of pre-treat their walkways so before the snow comes mm -hmm. down and bonds to the uh sidewalk or the driveway if you pre-treat it with a a type of salt it helps to to keep the snow from bonding and therefore after you shovel you don't have that layer of ice that now you have to use a lot more ice melt and or slip and fall on. so, so what, ki one oh, what kind of salt is that is it the regular like ice melt yeah, salt you, or yeah you can use any type that you like but we use a liquid salt so we spray it on so it's kind of oh, like really? you were to season your it's almost like if you were to season a pan before you cook yeah. so they so, so the eggs don't stick or something like that it's very similar to that but it helps to keep the driveway safe or the walkways is that, that is available so cool. like at home depot or is that available to general consumers or is that something only a contractor can buy you can get it at uh, you might be able to get a, a big box store that's kind of a newer product that's coming out because it's better for the environment you don't oh, get much salt. it's better for pets i mean we we make it we do apply it but um um you can almost make it yourself if you know how to make it it's a, it's essentially salt water but it's got to be a certain percentage so it's hmm. you kind of have to know what you're doing to make it but um but it does a great job of protecting the property that's fabulous so i think yeah. if you if you didn't do it the right way you would be spraying more water than salt and you just create a, a slicker you just create Correct. ice rather than treat it <laughs> yeah. well you laugh. Yeah. I actually Correct. take Morton salt, just like regular. I buy a big box of it, and I, I have flagstones, so that gets, like, really icy. And I just treat it with the Morton salt on it, like just regular salt. And that seems yeah. to, I mean, it's so simple, but, it, I mean, you yeah, know. It's, it, yeah, it's all about prevent, preventing that bond before the snow comes down and melts a little bit, and then it, it freezes to the surface, and you have to use a lot more product that after the storm so if you put even if you sprinkle a little bit of rock salt or ice melt before the snow falls mm -hmm. and it really helps to protect the walkway so all right so what you're yeah. so that's something that um anybody could have rock salt and you throw it down before it starts snowing is that what you're saying correct yeah okay exactly so so essentially it creates that brine before it um before it bonds okay and then but yeah. you're saying your product which i've never heard of before yeah. you yeah. spray it with your pre under pressure trucks you spray it on the like driveway or the walkway yeah so we have different methods that we apply it um we have a truck that can back into a driveway and we you know press a switch and it sprays the truck the driveway on the right way out or really cool. the other option cool. is a pump-up sprayer that you can use which works really well so yeah. um 
And I yeah, love that it's um, I love that it's environmentally friendly because yeah. uh, sometimes yeah. I put cat litter down. Yeah. But that's yeah. it's you a little clumpy and, and, and right, it comes in the house. It's not ideal. Um, right. Right. And then rock salt may not be as good either, just well, it's because it's kind of crunchy. Like it's kind of thick. Like yeah. it, it doesn't seem to break down. That's why I end up using the morning yeah. salt because it kind of you can spray well, a little, like can, nice thin can, layer on. Right. It can also negatively affect. Um, you know, paws for, for dogs or cats and things like that. So so oh, using yeah. a, a oh, brine right. is so much better than using straight salt um, on a walkway. So that's another benefit to it, you know? So right. I have a question. Um, yeah. Lisa has chickens, and I saw her <laughs> hen and rooster walking oh, up, yeah. uh, in front of my, my the other neighbor's house. <laughs> and how does rock salt affect chicken feet? Do you know? That's... That's a good. You might have you might have to ask a farmer on that, but I, I, I know they are, they are, they yeah. they they like the pathways, have, yeah, where I yeah, shovel. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. you so you would pre-treat and um Great. and the ice dams. Talk a little more about ice yeah. dams because I never had them before yeah. a couple of years ago, and they're just awful. Yeah, I got them yeah. the same so, year you got them. Yeah, they're. Yeah, so the the biggest tips well, we've been doing offering this type of service for many years, but one of the things that we found, especially three years ago was that right. a lot of homeowners just didn't have time to react. They, they just waited till the snow built up, and then they said, we have to get this off after they saw the water pouring in the house. Okay. And a couple tips that you want to look for is um, to make sure that the house is properly insulated. Because yeah. if you can keep the snow from melting rapidly, then that's the first step, right? Yeah. And the other is getting the snow off of the roof when you know it's going to stay on the roof. For an extended period of time yeah. right so if you have six to 12 inches of snow and it's going to stay on the roof for a week and a half to two weeks because the temperature stays in the 30s during the day and then the teens at night that's a pretty good sign that you might want to consider getting the snow off okay right? and so so a person could rake it i know i have to get out on my yeah. addition roof right. and i have to shovel because right. it's a five pitch and my builder said it might collapse because it's almost flat. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's yeah. not fun, but well, sometimes it is fun. Yeah, yeah and, it, and it can be really dangerous too. So yeah. uh -huh. option one is to get the snow off. And okay. if you do have ice dams, then the next question is how do you, how do you address them? Yeah. So you can either, I see a lot of contractors go out and they use hammers and chisels. And that's what although I expected, that's, yeah. That's a, yeah, it's effective, but it's also not good for the roof right no you're, no ultimately you're hitting the shingle as well and yeah, you, exactly. what happens is you start peeling part of the ice dam off and it's still bonded to the shingle and the weight of the ice rips the rest of it off so right that doesn't it's sound not a, excuse me I should no. really so the best the best method is to use steam and that's a, that's the method we use so it, it literally cuts it like butter so you're able to cut chunks out of it and then undercut it and then Take little pieces heat? off at a time. Did you say heat yeah. or steam? Steam, right. So steam. we take our ah. machine. And, yep. Yeah, it works really well. So cool. That makes so sense. Steam. That does make yep. perfect sense. So yeah. you. So again, with the pressure, so it's pressurized steam. Your whole thing is Correct. pressurized. So that yes, makes sense. So it's like a forced, forced hot. Right. Yeah. And it would yeah, melt it's, it it's almost like a, almost like a steam blade, basically. You're, yeah. You're, cool. The steam coming out at this. Yeah. Steam it works pretty well. So it's, we do a lot of it, but um, hopefully. This year we won't have those issues, but um, okay. we're well, here if you need us, you know? Yeah, thanks. Well, we never know. It's New England, right? We don't yeah, know what I it's going to do. Well, remember yeah. we used those salt things with the socks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. we put rock salt in stockings socks, yeah, like both and of us are hung like, them off, yeah. hung them off, tie the end of the thing and hang them off the edge of the... Of the, actually of the gutter because then the, the snow would melt right in that little stream. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So our houses looked a little ridiculous, but it works. Right. We, I was like, no, you did so the rock salt thing. <laughs> yeah. It really, it really ups the resale value of the house when they have pantyhose. <laughs> right. There's socks. Why do you have socks yeah. hanging off your gutter? Yeah. Is that that's why? That's a good look. Yeah. You're funny. Yeah, but, well, thank you, Mark. We don't want to take too much no. time. I know you're home with kids. Um, no, my pleasure. Happy to help. Yeah. Awesome. Well, it does help because we really, we really want to make sure that um, people could you know join us or or call in with questions um can they call you with questions what what number yeah. would they call to reach sure, you sure no. yeah i appreciate you asking yeah they can call our office which is at 508 944 6644 we're happy 944 6644 yes ma'am 6644 okay yeah. thank you so thanks. much mark we yeah. really yeah, appreciate thanks. it
We, yeah, we appreciate it. Thank you so those much. Those are great okay. winter safety tips. Thank you. That's Thanks. awesome. Right, yeah. Right, I learned some care. things. I know. I didn't even know. Yeah. So, that, I mean, the pre-treating, I, I guess I've kind of been doing for a while with the Morton salt, but, I mean, I didn't realize that you could make a solution. Yeah, I so love I love the idea of, of spraying it yeah, on. Just like put it in, like, like putting little on a weed killer thing or whatever. Your yeah, or like putting thing. it in the bottom when you're, when you're frying something. Right. You treat the surface. So right. it's the same idea. Um, oh, and we had Corey call in to say that she enjoyed Mark's information. We did too. Yeah, what a great idea to have Mark call in. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Perfect. Yep. Well, so winter, again, Mark's oh. number is 508-944-6444. If you have ice dams or you want your driveway pre-treated, um, he knows what he's doing and he's a great guy. So awesome. thank you again. Um, yeah, so the other things, I, I looked up some things um, from the National Safety Council, mm -hmm. and they said their mission is to eliminate preventable deaths at work in homes and communities on the road through leadership, research, education, and advocacy. So I guess this falls under education. Yeah. Driving in the winter means changes in the way you drive, obviously. So safety tips, take it slow. You know, use your blinker because yeah. people aren't always paying Give attention. Give plenty of time to stop. And so continue your story about your windows. Yeah, well, so it was interesting. I was trying to be careful, you know what I mean? And yeah. I was like, geez, you know, and I actually went home and took the Windex and cleaned it off because I, I was like, well, I don't have time to go to the car wash. But, you know, like it, I think, I mean, I'm always careful, but like around the schools, I think you're just super careful. Right. Especially when you're going, I pick up my daughter to the middle school, there's just middle schoolers everywhere. And yeah. they don't necessarily always look when they right. cross the street and right. stuff. Or they're following a friend. Right. You know, it's like a dog following a ball a little right. bit. Right. You know, not to insult a middle schooler, right. but they're focused they're, on the friend. Right. They not on without, you Right. Know. So mm -hmm. like, I was like, I, it kind of took me back a little bit. So I was like, oh, I need to wash my car window, you know? Yeah. But also there's a lot of things that I do I have winter tires I put on my car oh you know so I make sure that because I drive all over the place in the winter so like I have winter tires you know I make sure my car's obviously I bought an all-wheel drive car because I want something that's good in the snow mm -hmm. and then I keep I keep rock salt in the car I keep a shovel in the car I keep jumper cables I keep a flare I keep a warming blanket I keep snacks you know what I mean those things just in case you know. So you you you're an emergency management person even for yourself. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I love it. And there's a first aid kit I in love there, it. and of it's course. A, I laugh. Celia's friends go in there and start rummaging through my snacks <laughs> all the time. Well, that's smart. Yeah, that's so smart. they get replenished all the time. But another thing, I know when I work for the busy nurses, and I was going in and out of houses. A lot of elderly folks can't get out there and shovel. So, like, I would like to tell people to be aware of their neighbors. And right. if, they're, if they're having trouble getting out there, just go over and shovel out their neighbor. I mean, I used to go over and shovel Pete's all the time. Right. You know what I mean? So, like, I, you, you just kind of want to be aware of them because they're not going to be able. And we have people in town that died you know shoveling snow too so that's yeah. another it definitely when you when you can yeah, feel the, your heart rate it, yeah it's, it's um a lot of exercise and a lot of effort and in that particular activity increases yeah. the likelihood of a heart attack so right. you know like if you're feeling short of breath stop yeah. you know you know what i mean and and take your time and and ask a neighbor if you're having trouble you know, like if, yeah, yeah, and it's also often first thing in the morning. Oh yeah, so a person gets up and they have to go to work and they're yep. hurry, hurry, hurry. Yeah, and too much, um, too fast. Yeah, they're rushing. On they're, the right. There's anxiety there, so there's yeah. a lot of things like that. But also, you know, I just think uh, one thing I always tell people is no, you know, like if you lose power in your house, make sure your CO two. Um, yeah, this is fire, what it talks it's, about. Yep. Yeah, fire um, detectors work. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because if the power goes out. Or say sometimes even water damage coming through the house, you may have to shut off your circuit breaker. So yeah. there's a few things you kind of want to know. You may need to cut, shut off your gas valves or things like that. So yep. if you do evacuate your home, that's right. something to think about. And then also, you, blow up. you know, one thing I tell people is just have an extra cell phone charger. Make sure you have a charger in the or car. Or one of those little yeah, um, hand crank little, ones. Or, or there's a, a pack, tube thing pack. that's got a... Yeah, a, it's got... I forget what it's called. Back, it's a power Backed pack. Backup or something. Yeah, it's a power pack. So this is um, still with the Safety Council. They they mentioned um, CO2 yep. and um, a carbon monoxide poisoning. Um, one third of homes have one installed. You know, you need the yeah. detector. Yeah. First of all, but second of all, J December and January are the peak of CO poisonings. Yeah, they are. And um, that's just CO, yeah. just carbon monoxide, not O2. CO, that's yeah. carbon dioxide. Yeah. So carbon monoxide 
Um, you need to have your battery replaced spring and fall. Yep. Don't heat your home with a gas range or oven because then your home fills with this. Right. Um, never run a car or truck inside an attached garage. We want to heat the car up, right. but if you do it inside the garage, that, that CO, yeah. carbon <laughs> monoxide, builds up. So the winter yeah. safety tip, be aware. And the other thing I know has happened to people is if they're heating their car up and their tailpipe is, is in up a against snowbank, snow. yeah. um, then it's, the gonna go car, right in the it's coming right back into the car. Yeah. So you have to be really careful what you do around um, around carbon or monoxide. Or even some people leave their kids in the car. You know what I mean? No, so, scary. I mean, like, while you're warming up the car, whatever you run in, just, just be aware of that because where you park, I mean, the, you go to grocery stores, sometimes stuff's blocked up. You know what I right. mean? So just be just be vigilant and be aware of where you where you're parking your car and what you're doing and mm -hmm. you know the potential consequences. And the other thing is, <clears throat> um, if someone is trying to feel a little lightheaded, yeah, the first thing you should do is go get fresh air. Yeah, right? If, the, if right. there's any possibility, or call nine one one. I mean, like, or yeah, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. if you're starting to feel Unlock light, the door and then call yeah, them. yeah. Um, the other thing is, I know, um, unfortunately, I've heard of people lighting um, and hibachi. Yeah. Inside. Yeah. And then those coals yeah. are going to put off carbon it, monoxide yeah. that, that isn't noticeable, and then you die. And there's a lot of old heaters people use. Right. So, and I, you know, I mean, again, you know, like we think of seniors that don't, if they don't get fuel assistance and stuff, it's right. expensive. So some people may look for alternative ways to heat right. their home. And that, a lot of those alternative ways can put your life at risk. So you right, know. like space heaters or yeah. fireplaces that they're Kerosene running, kerosene heaters, or candles that yeah. tip over. Yeah, I actually had my cat. I had a candle on a kitchen table with a tablecloth. Yeah, I went into the other room to you know whatever, change the record or whatever, I was sitting living, and I smelled smoke. Uh, the cat had gotten up on the table, knocked it off, knocked the table, the the candle over. Yep, and the tablecloth was on fire, burnt the table. Nice. Um, but that's all because I was in there. It was a kitchen, right. water, fire out, done. But right. still, it's a little scary. So a real easy tip, and I always tell people to go to um, ready.gov, R-E-A-D-Y.gov, and they have all the winter safety tips. You can download it. You can, it's, you. I mean, and that's a great, yeah, this that's is, a great website as well. But what is, what is, what does R-E-D-I stand for? Ready? Or I, yeah. My Idaho. Ready. Yeah. 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 So R-E. You said R-E. D -I? A or R E A D Y. R E A. Oh, like oh, sorry, Rady. Rady. Yeah. So I, what, my Idaho accent. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Comes so out what, that what does it stand for? Just Rady to be Rady. Oh, ready to be, to be prepared. So it's R E A D Y. Yeah. Like ready. Oh, yeah. okay. I'm sorry. That's, that's my okay. Idaho. No, but it's like yeah. I read the book. So R E A D. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. And then this one is nsc.org, which is National Safety Council. Yeah. So that's great. So R Ready.org. Yeah. Or nsc.org, and um, you know, again. Be careful shoveling yep. for your back as well as your heart. And prepare your house and your ice dams and yep. all that. Put, Just put salt like down. Like Mark said, put, treat the <clears throat> pre-treat. Right. Um, be aware of whether you have enough gas in the car. Yeah. Because you don't want to be stuck by the side of the road waiting for the right. tow truck. And have s supplies in the car in case you need it. Gloves and a shovel. Right. And, and that's know. the other thing that says is treat frostbite <clears throat> immediately. Yep. Use first aid to help someone who may have hypothermia or a frostbite. Um, what does one do for frostbite? Well, one of the best things is, is to get the flesh warm. <laughs> so usually it's frost nip that you get, so you, you have that sensitivity there. And the best thing to have in those in your car is one of those little heat hot, packs hot that, you, yeah. Yeah, that you heat up, and, and that does it real quick. But so actually, heard, I, our segment's almost yep, up. we are. Yeah. So I've heard that um, <clears throat> you don't run your hands under hot water. Mm -mm, so no. you would run under lukewarm to yep, cool. Lukewarm to cool. To get it back. And you bring it back slowly because yeah. you can have a lot of cell damage and nerve damage with it. So you yeah. kind of want to go slow. But All right. the key is not to get frostbite if right. you can. <laughs> so check ready.org or nsc.org and yep. take care of yourself this winter. Yep. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Thank you. Yep. Galen, Sarah Ellen, Scott Gaffin, and Joshua Hill.
And we're back. We are ready to talk about school vacation week. Yeah, and what are you guys doing? We want to know what you're doing kind of locally so we can give parents some tips what what's going on locally. I've seen a lot of, actually, a lot of people going to Fatima Shrine. Oh, but the, and that's part of our second the next segment, the last segment is talking about the holiday Christmas lights. lights. But right. yeah, I yeah. mean, like, what do you do on Christmas oh. or any vacation? Mm -hmm. You know, that's what we wanted to talk about in school vacation. Because a lot of times, you know, the kids are, you know, antsy. Yeah. <laughs> if you're well, home, so you're right, looking for you stuff don't have to a do. Fabulous cruise planned or a trip to Disney. Right. Or, um, if you're kicking around the house, um, there are local places to visit. Yeah. We can think of some, but we would love it if you guys call in, share some of the things some you ideas. do with your family. Yeah. Yep. And before we do any more of that, um, last week I meant to say Happy Hanukkah to all our friends oh, yes. who celebrate. Um, tonight I think is the last night yes. of Hanukkah. Last Tuesday night I think was the first night. Yep. So Happy Hanukkah to yep. everybody. And um, yeah, so our winter break yeah. is a time when kids are home for 10 days. Yeah. Um, it's supposed to maybe snow a little. Right. But there isn't a whole lot of snow. And that makes it a little difficult because if there's snow, you can go sledding, you can snowshoe, you can do all kinds of stuff. And right. right now in the woods, I spend a lot of time in the woods, the woods are icy. Right. Because the snow's melted, it rained on top of it, and now, like, exactly. everywhere, I'm not even riding my horses in the woods because it's real slick out there. Yeah, so, and like, that's actually what um, Elmwood School Playground today. Yeah. It melted and it froze, refroze, yeah. so it's ice. It's ice. Yeah. Totally. Which glacier. kids like, but, you it's know. glacier. Yeah. It's so a, let me read what I have. Oh, yeah. um, I printed out mm -hmm. from the Learning Resource Center of Polk County, nice. which I'm pretty sure is like in North Carolina or something. <laughs> but I looked online winter break activities and this was a great list. Yep. Um, school is out and winter break is here. Don't let boredom get you or your child down this holiday season. <laughs> Check out these ideas for students of all ages and levels. So preschool, and yep. this, you, and you and I have done all these things. Right, because we're- Listen to this list. Yeah. Help bake cookies. Right, I just did that tonight. Build a fort. <laughs> yep. Done and that. you can build that fort inside with a table and the sheets yeah, on yep. or outside. over the thing yeah. or outside. Read your favorite book. Yeah. Write a letter to a friend. Mm. Create a holiday craft. I used to get this fabulous kit called Together Time. I don't know where. Yeah. Together Time, and it would come in a little box like this, and you'd open it up and we'd have some little crafts that Katie, my oldest, and I did together. Yeah. It was so fun. We're always, like, Celia and I so are fun. always, Celia and me got that. We, tonight, that's ironically what we do. We did cookies and exactly. got like sparkles and all that because exactly. she's giving stuff to her teachers. Yeah. And then her friend, she bought clay, the, the, what Fimo? Or, um, no, the stuff you can cook. The Fimo, I think it's Oh, called. is it? Yeah. It smells really bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, when I opened the oven, I was like, yeah. whoa. It's toxic. <laughs> yeah. Like, whoa. <laughs> but she made that with her, for her friends. Yeah. And exactly. like, we did tons of stuff. We make bread, we make cinnamon rolls, we'd, yep, exactly. you know, like, do baking, all, we did so crafting. We did, yeah. Right. Like, and you, I have to say, Joanne Fabrics is a great oh, place. Oh, yeah. Joanne down uh, in Mar uh, Milford, yep. Michaels. On 109, Michaels. Yep, and um, AC Moore. AC and, Moore. They have yeah. lots of great things. So, crafts are great. Um, then, this is one of my favorites. Stop by the library yep. for activity, story time, or pick out books. Oh, yeah. Our library is fabulous. Have you been in there? I haven't been to oh, it yet. And every time I drive by there, inside. I've been like, I gotta go inside. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. They merged the, the beautiful old um, stonework. The old building that used to be the library originally yeah. got merged with the, the old new. Episcopal Chapel. And that's what we used to have is those two ah. gorgeous stone buildings. I have to say, I love stone buildings. Me too. With this, uh, the breezeway, well, the modern but thing. It's very modern. But yeah. now it's even more modern because they have it's all glass in the front. You go in and it's it's stone, um, a stone floor, beautiful stone buildings on Ooh. the side, a little room here, little yeah. room there. But then in the back, it's all new. Oh, so it's all like modern seating and shelves, and they have a whole youth room. Ooh. Your kids should go to that youth room. You have to be 13 and up, but they have a whole corner for playing video games it's a big screen no yep and then upstairs is the children's room beautiful nice. lots of play areas lots of st stacks and then the basement um, is all the nonfiction and carols study carols and um, awesome. the, yeah so historical area so go to the library is another idea um, elementary school that was just preschool <laughs> elementary Play board games. Yeah. Lots of really cool games. Yeah. I was looking at some. Randy brought over exploding kittens. <gasps> I almost got that, but then it sounded a little violent to me. <laughs> right. And I am I like my kitty cat. I don't yeah, mind. I don't. 
I know. I heard. I saw that. <laughs> yeah, actually. I haven't played it, but I saw it. When yep. Sula there's was... there's exploding kittens. There's yeah. Catan. There's um, uh, what's your meme or something? Yeah. Oh. So there are a lot of really good. We, new... we play cribbage actually, right? like yep. old school cribbage, yep. and like. Then um, it says make your own chess. board game. Ah. Make your own board game and play it with family. Write a poem about your holidays. Participate in winter indoor fun. Well, that's just what we're saying. Conduct science experiments. Check yeah. with your parents first. Um, but Celia and I have done paper a bunch snowflakes, of snowflakes. Yeah. Paper snowflakes. Um, decorations. Magazine collage. Cut things out of magazines and mm -hmm. make something. Um, and you can use Mod Podge on those. You can actually. Yeah. Well, we did. Seal it up. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. is really. <laughs> so this says make a lava lamp. Make sure you check with your parents before you try right. making a lava lamp. Look up the no directions. Yeah, yeah. Make cookies, gingerbread house, discuss a book, gingerbread read a book. Houses, yeah. Alphabet hunt, so you find things that start with A, B, C, I guess, right. around the house. I haven't done that before. Or scavenger hunt. Snowman snow globe yeah. is kind of fun. Yeah. Um, scavenger hunt. Neighborhood photo safari. I don't even know what that is. Um, and then middle school indoor activities. Make ornaments. Um, try science technology engineering math activities, gingerbread house, Christmas cards or holiday cards, science experiments again. Awesome. Yeah, and then high school, host a party with yeah. friends. Make sure your parents are home. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do it yourself, blah, blah. So it's, you know, all, uh, a Christmas movie marathon. Yeah. Or any kind of movie marathon. You could do Harry Potter movie marathon. Right, right. Um, you could do, you were saying, Marvel Comics movie marathon. Right. Clean and out your closet or, and yeah. donate to items to less fortunate. Yeah. Read books to kids. Go don't go go volunteer. Yeah. Um, work on college plans, applications, look into jobs, look for scholarships, throw a New Year's Eve party. Yeah. Um, college age, they say learn to cook, try baking something, make goals, um, try restaurants. Yeah. Do clean out your room. Lots of we really live cool near Boston too. Oh yeah. So Boston is amazing during school vacation. The ice sculptures are amazing in there. The frog pond, you can go skate. You yep. can, like, it's just absolutely beautiful. Right. You know, like, and John says, check out Audubon sanctuaries. <gasps> like right. Rod Moore and Natick. Yep. And I think uh, Drumlin Farm, we had... Um, oh, Drumlin Farm's great. Yeah, yeah. we had, actually, today, uh, Drumlin Farm visited Elmwood School, and, and oh, she nice. brought a screech owl. <gasps> oh, oh, so I need to have one. one. <laughs> Tiny little... Oh. And it's beautiful. It's just rust, so rust colored feathers. And it was so... Just, Looking we at have everything. a bard owl on our I've street. I've heard it. Yeah, I've heard it. he's down a little further, but I I'll see him when he rides. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. So, uh, thank you, John. So, yeah, Audubon Society, Audubon Sanctuaries. Yeah. Um, Wachusett Mountain is nearby. Yeah. And Neshoba Valley. Yeah. And Ward Hill. Yeah. So there are ski areas yep. pretty close by. Um, and there's indoor skate. I mean, even yep. though it's kind of taken up with hockey, you can usually there's open skate time. Right. And actually, a lot of places have open swim time. Right. My daughter's Westboro. Big, yeah, Westboro has. Swim I know 10. Framingham has it, and I know the Sheridan Keith has. Tech. Yeah. So yep. like even if you're bored and you want a little. Exercise, Water. yeah, right? or something you can get. There's like family swim time, and they have every place I've been to has some kind of hair dryer. So if you're thinking that oh. you're gonna freeze, oh right, you know, you there's something you could dry your hair with before you go outside. Right, right. Um, and then there are things like uh, there's the Weston Ski Track right. at Leo J oh, Martin Golf Course. That's beautiful. On yeah. the Weston Wellesley Line, if you go down 135 and you take yep. a left. Um, in Newton Lower Falls, and they um, groom it. Like they, that it's, whole, I've done that. It's so fun. It's so beautiful. And it's, it's not. You know, it's not far. You don't have to get in the car and, and travel for two hours to get to a ski <gasps> you know place. What's really pretty is Sturbridge. Oh. Oh, Sturbridge Village is really amazing this time of year because they hmm. it's like do all reenactments of old New England. Sturbridge Village. I've never thought of that. Yeah, the, that's a good idea. Yeah, it's another like really neat. And I, even a road trip's kind of fun. Yep. Because it's pretty seeing, you know, maybe kind of yucky outside, but it's kind of fun to go to Western Mass or, you know, go to the ocean. I actually, the Cape and the ocean are one of Beautiful. my favorite places during the winter because it's not crowded. Mm -hmm. You just bundle up, you know, walk along the beach, and it's mm -hmm. just, and you go on a nice New so England it's not inn. too windy. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. So. Or even um, North Shore, Gloucester, Rockport. Yep. It's beautiful up there. That's, that's right. Yeah, yes. I love it. 
and that's in those old New England inns. They're so kind of neat, mm-hmm. and it's fun to take the kids there, get some clam chowder and lobster. Yeah, and use it. Yeah, lobster exactly, and see the ships on the on the ocean and on mm-hmm. the bay, and it's just it's really neat. Yep. Another cool thing to do is the aquarium. Oh um, yes. We went to the aquarium. Well, I had a membership. Children's museum. Yeah. Yeah, I remember every year, and then we kind of got tired of it because right. we were seeing it seemed like the same thing every time. Right. There is always something new. But right. also the library passes. Yes. So you can get library yes. passes because when our kids were younger, yeah, I'm sure you got it. Yeah, yeah, it's expensive. So you can get them for the children's museum. You can get them for a science museum. Right. Which is great. Acton Discovery Museum yeah, still there? Disco- yeah, Disco- and the one in Worcester. I forget what that's called. Um, there was a Higgins Armory, which was a oh, right. Knights, but now I think the Higgins Armory merged with the Worcester Art but Museum. But there's like a... Um, some explore. environmental oh, oh, equatorium yeah equatorium so that's in worcester and then you can do the butterfly yep. thing in West, westford, westford. And butterfly like it, museum yeah and yep. it's there's so much to see and i mean the muse, museum of fine arts oh, cool. i mean i still love it and I, I i took my daughter when she was slightly too young but oh. now she would appreciate it yeah more. You, you can't run and yell in yeah there. exactly yeah <laughs> Like, <laughs> I've been there, done that too. And so, symphony is amazing. Symphony is wonderful. Yeah, I depending mean, again on the age of the kid, if yeah. they can sit still. Um, the other thing is, even walking um, in Boston, downtown yeah. Boston, Newbury Street, Faneuil Hall is really cool. Beautiful. Freedom Trail, Marlboro Street, like yep. Back Bay, because they have the yep. old gas lamps, and it's right. just it's in Commonwealth Avenue. Right. Like those are the nostalgic pictures. I mean, it's it, yeah. the Boston Common. Right. You know, and then you can go to Chinatown and get dim sum. And, like, I mean, there's so much stuff to go to the North End. Right. I mean, there's so many things that are just fun to do with your kids. I mean, I've been doing that with my kids since they, they right. were little. And I'm like, let's get in the car and let's just head to let's Boston. And, and actually, the Central Artery is gorgeous now. now. Yeah. So that parkway that goes down the Central Artery is absolutely beautiful mm-hmm. now. And, the, and that's always changing. And, you know, in the summer there's vendors there. And it's just, there, there's just so much to do. The other thing that's fun, because um, I grew up, oh, and we have a, uh, someone mentions Basketball Hall of Fame in Springfield. Oh, yes. Not on the top of my list, but a good idea. Fans. Oh, but yep. you go, you and know. And isn't there um, something in New York, too, ba- baseball, something? Something, yeah. I don't know. But, um. I often, well, because I grew up in Newton, we could get on the trolley yep. on the MTA and go right into Boston. And go right in. And that's, you know, so you park your car, yep. you put your, not in Harvard Yard, yeah. you park your car and you put the money <laughs> in the machine. Yeah. And then, or swipe it or whatever they do. Now, now. they have an app. Which I, I have an app. The app is awesome. Yep. Park Boston. It's right. It's like, yeah, it works so nice. So it's nice. easy. You get on there and you get, it's, I think it's so cool yeah, it. because it's something that our city has that not yeah. every city has. Yeah. So you get on that. Uh, MBTA yep. subway go in get off at Park Street walk around mm-hmm. get you know walk around from there to Government Center yeah um, Government Center is uh, awesome yeah and yeah. even to the State House and the Common yeah so much to see so much to do and it's so accessible I mean you can yep. get around Boston like literally you see the whole city in a day because right. when friends visit, I, I know exactly. Boston like this back of my hand. I'm like, let's go. But right. And the other thing is, on and, you know. and, you, and when you get off at Government Center, from Government Center, you can go to the aquarium. Yep. You can go to the North End. Yep. You can go to Faneuil Hall. Yep. And Haymarket's there on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, if you're at the open market, which is so fun. Exactly. Like, I love it. People are arguing. Old ladies are stealing stuff. You know, it's just... <laughs> it's like yeah, really funny. Like, you know? That is funny. Yeah. Like you can get fish, you can get vegetables, you get yep. all kinds of stuff. I always go to the fish market and get oysters and like yep. it's just it's in Union Oyster House burned, you heard. Oh, they'll fix it. Yeah, I know. But I was yeah. like that was always one of my I know, staples. That was an oldie. Yeah. Um the other thing is, um, I know a lot of times when my kids were little, bowling. Yeah. Roller laser skating. tag. Yep. And there's roller blading now. Yeah. Right. Laser tag. Yep. Lots of indoor Tubing things. Area. Oh, and then indoor, there's yeah. the, um, I forget what it's called, but the place where the trampolines. Oh, Sky jump, Zone. Sky Zone. Oh, that so place just, is awesome. Right. And, yeah. right, did you just say indoor, indoor sky diving? Yeah, I don't know of any here. There is indoor skydiving, and oh. it's near, it's um, Worcester-ish. Because oh. um, two of my kids did, indoor have done Indoor rock that. climbing, too. Indoor rock we've climbing. Done indoor right, rock climbing. Rock gyms. So there are many, many things to do. Um, Please, you know, I, I, let us know your favorites. Yeah. Um, Get and, your kids out there and have some fun. Yeah, because it's... You know, and I know a lot of people go away. I, I guess we talked about local stuff, but I know a lot of people go away for um, winter vacation. Uh, but it's, you know, it's also, it's kind of hectic to travel. Last year, Celia and I went to Idaho. 
And the traveling's not great, you know what I mean? So sometimes it's a tough it, time of year. They have to de-ice the wings of the plane if it snows. And everything's expensive, yeah. Right. yeah. It's expensive, so, but, you know, like, we would love to hear what you guys are doing, any yeah. ideas, but I know the Trails Club usually has a hike, like, on New Year's Day. Oh, cool. and, you know, like, so there's a lot of stuff that goes on just here in Hopkinton yeah. that, that's really nice. All our state parks, you can go to Ashland State Park, which is absolutely beautiful. Or Hopkinton. Hopkinton State Park, Whitehall. And I d actually know a lot of kids go sledding yeah. at the dam at Hopkinton oh, State Park. I've it's, done it. It's, it's not a blast. vertical. But it's pretty close to vertical. And it has a vertical. jump in the middle because yep. we snowboard, and I have to say I've slidden down on a cardboard box and yeah, yeah, yes. yeah like yeah, of course. And tumble down, you know. Of course. But it's fun. I mean, like, and it's it's easy to get in there, and it's fun with the yep. kids and. And then Ice House Pond. Yeah. Kids can go roller, ice skating. You know, ice they, skating. And they have that the Ice House Pond, um, the old railroad station where you can they have it open where you can. Now. It's a warming it's center. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not sure. You have to check with the fire department first. Yeah. To find out if it's safety. If if it's safety. frozen enough right now it's not um, and the lake maspinock takes a while i know we used to live a long time ago we yep. lived on the lake and um you could hear it boom yeah. when it was settling freezing yeah. deeply um but you don't want to be out there until you check with the fire department to make yeah. sure that it's safe to go because it needs to be at least three four feet yep. thick and well, and you hear about people and their animals and all kinds of stuff, and then you have to get rescued, and you're on the news. And it's cold. And, yeah, it's cold. You know, and it's embarrassing. Yeah, and convenient. <laughs> right, right. So save yourself all that. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. you know, check and and, make and sure actually, it's safe. I have to say, um, I went to Mystic, Connecticut this summer oh. to the Mystic Aquarium, oh, and I that Mystic, there. it's cool. Is Mystic, it? Connecticut is cool. It's not that far, right? Um, and it's it's a little south, yeah. Um, but it's definitely tourist um, friendly. Ah. So they have they have ships that are docked there, sort of uh, historical ships. Nice. They have an incredible aquarium um, with you know really cool animals. I think it's probably open, yeah, year round. Um, but yeah, yeah that that That's was awesome. a fun thing, and I would think that would be open too. And Providence. Providence. I mean, Federal Hill is beautiful, yes. and the river, I think they have a lighting ceremony along the river over the holidays as well, so. Yep, and um, the the outlets in Maine, Kittery, Maine, has all the, right. if you're a shopper, if your kids want to go shopping, I don't know, that would be so <laughs> yeah. exciting, I don't yeah, know, we're not shopping, shop. no. No. but you know what? Lots of ideas, so get out there, have some yeah. fun during the holidays. Don't let your kids drive you crazy, you know. Yeah, and actually, get them out and it, have and fun with them. As Enjoy a, the as time. As a mom of a 29-year-old, 20-year-old, and a 17-year-old, it's really important to build the memories and yeah, have these great experiences by. with your kids. Because before you know it, they don't want to spend so much time with you. They're busy with their friends. Exactly. So these family vacation times are really important. They're precious. Um, yeah. So well, enjoy. We're gonna break for our next segment. Yep. And we'll be back in a few minutes. Yep. We'll talk about lights. Oh, I missed nope. me. It's okay. It's okay. New England. Got me out. Increasing cases of carbon monoxide poisoning. Carbon monoxide is a gas that's indetectable to our senses and can make you very sick or even kill you in a short period of time. Fortunately, carbon monoxide poisoning is entirely preventable. Ensure that you have your heating system and other home equipment maintained and inspected annually. Never operate gas-powered equipment indoors, and never barbecue indoors. Make sure to have working carbon monoxide alarms on every floor of your house and within 15 feet of every bedroom door. They should be tested monthly. When snow falls, take care to make sure that chimneys, heating, and dryer outlets are clear of snow so that exhaust can exit. Similarly, shovel out your car's exhaust and never allow children or other people to sit in an idle car while you're shoveling it out. If your carbon monoxide alarm ever goes off, don't ignore it. Exit your house and call the fire department. By following these steps, you can protect your family this winter. This week on Poetic Lines, Elizabeth Lund sits down with poet and filmmaker Kala Schwartz. Well, there is this poem, Moving Slips, right? And that's a poem that was actually inspired by a friend of mine whose first language wasn't English. And I keep this blog blog is wakewiththesun.blogspot.com and I said to in my blog I said I'm going to move slips tomorrow oh, and we're back Hi. <laughs> we are now going to talk about lights yes how many is too many do and I have, noticed your lights I uh, do have my light necklace and my light earrings on and 
Um, yeah. So I actually watched something called The Great Light Fight, which <laughs> was Great hilarious. <laughs> and I know people at home have watched this. So call and give us your opinions, please. Now the I have to watch it because I It's hilarious. Watched it. <laughs> so it was on last night. I couldn't even tell you what channel because I was just trying find to find it, yeah. I was trying to find something to entertain myself while I sat down and uh, <laughs> for five minutes. Um, but Great what what I saw was <laughs> There's one family, the Burkett family out of Scottsdale, Arizona, won the first show by making it like a Disney theme park. In the outside, it was all just all lit up and this, yeah. that, list lit up here and that lit up there and they had music. But then you went in yeah. to something and they had a whole thing over here and you'd go in the little house and the people were inside doing stuff. It was like a Disney show wow. at their home. That's dedication. And the, all the <laughs> the two kids were all excited about it, and the mom was on board with the dad. They were, this was their thing. Right. I, I was just amazed. That's then this awesome. other home, which was also amazing. This actually, I would have preferred the other one. Yeah. This kid was his name is Mike Shove, S H O A F, Durham, North Carolina, art student. He loved this so much from like fifth grade or something. Mm -hmm. He used to plan all the lights, and he had them. He had them like, it was. Perfect, and he had a computer program that he could played along with music. Set up right, so he said he did whatever programming magic he did, so that the lights changed along with the music, so that the tree would all light up green, and then wow. it would all come down red, and then this would flash over here, and this would flash over here to some kind of music, some song. Wow, it was, it was incredible to me how how brilliant. And he's going into this as a career, clearly a gift that he has. Yeah. Um, this other family wow. had four acres of lights. Four acres. Yes. That's and then a, how many foot? I, I don't know. It blew my mind. There. It blew my mind. This other guy collect collected something called blow molds, which are those big, like just a lit up. Oh yeah. Shape. So he had little mice, and he had. He but had, I see them around town. Like sometimes they're like exactly they're lightweight, so they blow. So he was this always collected these things, and he gets them at yard sales, and he was his thing. That's and so awesome. his was all lit up. He has and a whole little neighborhood. He did, and his mom was on board with it. And then there was this other one that had a mini, mini Santa's village, and they had collect. They had they had renovated these old pieces, you know, where the. This, this this Santa's going like yeah. this, and They're you can see the toys. little wheel back here, you know, whatever. And then Grandma's going like this on the piano, and yeah, it was hilarious. That's so, awesome. And then but they had all the lights too. And then um, another one, twenty miles of wiring for 125 cartoon characters, and this is in Mount Shasta, California. Whoa. Then um, <laughs> Orlando, Florida, there were some guys who who. Um, had lights and walls that lit up in displays, and and then they put 49 stars to honor the Pulse nightclub oh, victims. Oh, nice! And so they yeah. put some meaning into it. That's great. Um, and then the winner of that section um, is a 71-year-old grandma, 71-year-old grandma who climbs up the trees herself, which she won't <laughs> let anyone help her. Oh, she geez. started doing this. I guess she got her electrician's license when she was 51. Because so she, she loved doing the wiring so much, and she started this because her daughter was in the hospital with something. The yeah. hospital was across the street, oh. and the daughter felt like she would miss the lights. She would miss the lights at Christmas, and so she was like, just look across the street, honey. So oh, she decorated the house, and she awesome. had. So now she does it every year for the kids in the hospital. Um, so she won because her. That, she's got such, such a big a heart. Great, yeah, she's that's helping. A, All right, so Heather, Deborah, Stephen, Mark, Liz. Oh boy. Like the Facebook Live video. Yay. Hi guys. Hi. Thank Call you. Call in. Let us know what you think about yeah. lights. Actually, I was. I've seen a few people on um, Facebook post Fatima Shrine, which I've never been. Yeah, so I've I was never like, been interesting. either. Interesting. And I've always loved the lights because I think, you know, I always, I, I always, Celia's like, Mom, stop looking. I'm like, I know, I see it. And I'm like showing her the lights and I wish I did more lights myself. But I think it's so special that people take the time to actually kind of, I think it's sharing their joy with other people. That's the way I look at it. It is joyful. Yeah, because it it's is. like it makes me happy every time. And I know, you know, maybe sometimes it could get over if it's your neighbor and, you know, it's a, you know, that's <laughs> kind of our subject. But, you know, like I think it's like I love Pam behind us. She puts those blue lights on the barn. Oh, and yeah. I love looking at those. Like yeah. I think they're so pretty. And blue lights aren't as intrusive right. as 
as a flashing. Right. I can't <laughs> imagine living at the by the Sitco sign, for example, right. like Kenmore Square, when right. that flashy thing was all night long. You know. Well, I have a friend out in Turner Falls oh, that he won a couple years the radio station thing. So we, one year he had actually the the logo, you know, ninety four point five or whatever it was on his roof, flashing like the whole roof. <laughs> one year he had all ho, night ho, long. Ho. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So oh, ho, ho. yeah, yeah. So, oh, so, uh-huh. so you know, but luckily I, he was across the street from a wastewater treatment plant. Oh, so I well, think they don't it care. was fine. But his new house is not there, so oh, yeah. yeah. So I think he toned down his lights yeah, a little kinda, bit. Yeah, you kind of have to. Yeah. So um, Caitlin Kelleher at the um, Wicked Local yep. um, posted just yesterday, coincidentally, um, Wicked Local asked, and our readers have spoken, talking about the best and brightest holiday decorations and light displays. Awesome. So, yeah, so it could be all kinds of different things. Um, there's a, They have an interactive map. If you go to wickedlocal.com, um, and there are just dots all over the place, um, She they were talking about all the displays and and um, how many lights are on each display, so you can check that out. Um, the other thing I have to say is, at the I go to Faith Church, oh, right. and um, Mike Lawrence, who is the lead pastor there, oh, has right. a fascination with Christmas lights. Really? Yes. So he told a story about how they got a live Christmas tree, mm-hmm. and he puts he puts. I don't even know, but like thousands of lights. I don't even know what the number is. But he doesn't have them. I, when I put mine up, I'm just going like, yeah. yes, done, right. pretty much. Right. Um, he has them internally. Right. So there are layers Slight inside layers. and then a little outer. My mom and outer, does that. And it's gorgeous. Yeah. But what the story is, and I don't think he'll mind because he told the church the other day, his wife called him one year yeah. because his three-year-old daughter was having such a good time tapping the floor and watching the, oh. the needles fall off the tree <laughs> oh, because no. the bulbs create Were dry, heat yeah, dry and the and the tree Back was to the drying out. Safety, yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. So she said, "I'm putting the tree outside, yeah, because it's a fire hazard. It is, you know. So and that's something. Those trees. So that go is up, too many lights, yeah, on a tree that's that's sitting there a little while. My tree right now, I put it up. Uh, Thanksgiving yep. weekend, it's starting to rain needles, yep. and I don't my my lights aren't hot; they're little tiny ones. LED lights, right? Yeah. So yeah. that's one thing people need to be really careful with if they have older lights. Back to the winter safety, is, yes, because those trees, man, they go up right up fast. You know, I just threw out. Um, it's hard for me to throw things out that are <laughs> yeah, useful, too, yeah. but I did it. Yeah. Um, my parents had a string of lights. Um, or I had a string of lights since it a long time that was like the ones that my parents had, yeah. but it's the kind that had the, the little, big, the big bulbs yeah. and the little clip that you could <gasps> attach to the tree my and the green and red it. wire yeah. thing. Okay. So I had it wrapped on a, on a cardboard put away and I had the bulbs and I thought, you know what? Mm. I'm not sure right. th- about the electrical safety of this yeah. set up. It went in the trash. Yeah, and anytime you question that, I mean, right. it doesn't I'd rather take be much. safe than yeah. sorry. Yeah. And I mean, the LED lights aren't terribly expensive, especially if you buy them after Christmas. Yep, that's <laughs> so, right. You that's know right. what I mean? So you could plan for the next year right. and get lights that are safer because that would just be such a tragedy. Right. Plus, all your Christmas presents would burn. Which uh, would not be, be yeah, not good. So, <laughs> so, yeah, and hopefully the smoke detector, but never. Right, uh, you never you know if you're not home. So the fire department gets there and gets oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, all of that. <laughs> yeah, all, all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> See, last week's show. Yeah. Um, so, how many lights are too many? Clearly, if you have a dead tree, yeah, shouldn't have any lights on that tree. Right. Um, if you're near a neighbor and they mind the flashing lights all night long Try to be, from yeah. your display, Turn it off at 10 o'clock at night right. or something. Right. Try to talk to them and say, yeah. hey, I'm you know, like, yep. when's, when do you want these off? Right. <laughs> and know? then um, thinking about uh, our common, hopping, hopping oh, I love common, it. I was looking at it on the there way. Was, there was a thought that I think was floated by Claire Bett, mm-hmm. who said on one of the chat rooms that um, Hopkinton ladies talk on, why don't we have more lights? Yeah. So, so a plan is afoot for maybe next year to mm-hmm. decorate more than just the gazebo oh, and the tree and the, the menorah. Hanukkah. Yeah. So we have more lights Ooh, that because makes... if you think about it, every single holiday, yeah. whether it's Diwali, yeah. 
uh, Christmas, Hanukkah, yeah. Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa, all has to do with the season of light right. because this is the dark time of right. the year. We need solstice, to bring some yeah. warmth, right? Yeah. Solstice, yeah. bring Winter some solstice, warmth in, yeah. warmth into our house. So um, and light, yeah, to encourage the sun to come back. Would it we be were... a great idea to celebrate other other holidays? That's what I said. Yeah, that's I exactly in, what in, I said. You know, each holiday has something so meaningful if you Beautiful. look at it. It was funny, I saw, I read something about um, Santa Claus the other day, which I didn't know the origin of it. And I guess in the 13th century, uh, a man, his parents left him a bunch of money and he used to sneak in people's houses and leave money. Well, he threw it in, yeah, he threw, threw it in the window. In. Yeah. Yeah, and it fell into the stocking right that's where the stocking came yeah. from but yeah. i thought it was so interesting that it is a time of giving i know our holiday it seems like it's turned into a very commercial holiday you know it's like oh i gotta go shopping here i gotta do this and but it's a time of giving and a time of spending time with your family and, and no matter what holiday it right is, exactly you know it's, it's all really like it's it's not it's a enjoy that time and savor it and if you're too stressed out don't buy so many gifts or don't... Yeah, it's not about the gifts. No, it really isn't about the gifts. It's really about the time that you spend and the... Right, the memories you know, and... The memories and... and the and traditions, too. Yeah. Um, Nancy gave us a like on Facebook. Thanks, Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. Yeah, I agree with you about the traditions. Yeah. And, and you always put this certain candle there. We do there, solstice, yeah. Or you always yeah. put... Or you may light an advent wreath. Or you may do um, the menorah. I know yeah. I did a menorah with my kids growing up because right. their, their father was Jewish. Right. You know, so... Um, to me, it's just a meaningful tradition of light, right? And 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 um, think you know, of something what we to bond and from, share from our childhood. Yeah. what our parents did too. You right. know, I have a, actually a good Christmas story. My parents left to go shopping. I left my little brother and I home, and we decided to rip through the gifts, so to see what was oh. in the gifts. And we taped them back up with uh, black <laughs> electrical tape. So my what? so yeah. whose idea was that? Probably mine, because I was the older sister. But, so listen to this, my parents never said anything. Oh, that's hilarious. So they were like, they loved like watching us every day. And she says on Christmas Eve when we were opening the gifts, we were like, because we already, but we wrapped them up with electrical tape. So that's like, so that's funny. the they funniest. Knew. But oh, we didn't, funny. I didn't talk to my mother about that till I was an adult. And that she, because like, we're like, did it slip by? Did it, you know, like what happened? Did they really not notice yeah. the black tape? <laughs> did they really not notice the black That's tape? That's hilarious. Yeah. So did you guys have Christmas lights on the tree? Or yeah, did we you have, did. Do you, did you put lights outside when you were little? Not so much, but more, the tree was always a big thing. We always went in the woods and chose oh. our own tree and cut down our own tree. You get In Idaho, you get a tree tag. Actually, there's a place in Ashland, I think you could do that. Yeah. Um, but the, we, that was always fun because we go hiking, you go up in the national forest and you pick whatever one you want. I, I mean, think, um, Nancy Best here in town actually has, um, a, a property in Grafton or her oh, husband's family excellent. where they, they, you can go cut your own tree. And that also makes it safer because the tree's fresher. Right. Because a lot of times the trees you buy, you know, Home Depot or wherever. They've been cut. They've been cut and they, you know, they can't keep them in water because it's hard to transport them. But it, it, that was always a tradition. And I remembered my dad pulling us in the sled and, and all of that. And my mom still has some. Of, we have these ornaments that um, the heat from the light. It's a bubbler. Oh, bubbly. I've seen those yeah, bubblers. Yeah, a bubbler. Yeah, ornament. those are those create heat though, right? Yeah, well, not Don't too they? bad. Because okay. trust me, my stepfather is like a you know like super super careful. But Good. yeah, I've touched them before. But it's you know that those memories are always and we always opened on christmas eve mm -hmm. so that was like what my family did and then the, but you um so back to lights yeah we had one light in the window oh. and the and the tree that's very um, new england right the, it is. the, the light in the windows yep. yeah yeah and then um i know saint lucia day right for swedish yeah um they you have do the, the, the crown right yeah and um and then a, a a and bun Diwali and is, um, they don't decorate their homes as, as far as I know. No. I think it's just the light, but it's a festival of light. Yep. Hanukkah, I don't think they decorate the home but as But they much, light each of the lights. But they light for each night. Yeah. Um, so it's mostly, I think, I think the question about too many lights is more, um, if it's too much, it, you know, yeah. there, there are some displays that are 
beautiful and fun and right. then there are some that are just oh my gosh what are they thinking right and, and you can't even well, look because it's so bright yeah the blinking right. might be <laughs> and 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 isn't there a thing about you know melatonin can't be produced if it's too bright of a right, right. So, you're a mess by christmas so you're a mess <laughs> because you got all this flashing light all the time I wonder how the people that actually put up the lights are affected. And I still, I, you have to think of Christmas know. vacation too. Yeah. Like the Griswolds, because I always like, you know, exactly. like, you know, like that, exactly. that, that, that's and what I picture a lot of the people out there putting up the lights, it, you know, like and that. And didn't, um, didn't um, uh, the tool man do a, something about Christmas lights too? Yeah, I think so. Um, and and the, then Home Alone, was there some Right, Christmas Home Alone, yeah. So, but it's always kind of a funny thing because, like, like it can be frustrating because the yep. lights are tangled up and, yep. you know, like, it's always, like, all my friends right now are like, oh, I'm having a Christmas party. I got get my tree up. I got to do it, you know. And I'm like, and this year I'm having work done on my house, so I decided not to do That's a fun. lot of stuff. You Paul know? gave us a like on Facebook. Thank, Thank you, Paul. Paul. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, call in, guys. Tell yeah, us your yeah. story. We've got Tell about us. a minute left. You got a we story again. We would love getting... to hear <laughs> your story of how you put up the Christmas lights and maybe you ended up swinging from the light <laughs> string right. or, or your gutter fell off. <laughs> right. Or, or maybe the reindeer that you stuck on the roof that looked like a good idea blew off right. and flew away. <laughs> right. You know, we love to hear um, some Christmas light stories. And um, whether you keep it simple or, or maybe you have a little more flashy. Right. I know I've seen those um, nets of lights right. that people just throw over right. the rhododendron bush and, and it doesn't look bad. Yeah, you know, it looks, it looks done. like... Right. Like, done. I like the idea of that, but I have to say the lights, the, the projector ones, the yes. project... Like the, I, the I swirly thing. Yeah, on the, I don't know if I f how I feel about those. Yeah, you know, and I love lights, so yeah, I was just like, yeah, that's I know. that's really cheating, you know. Well, and the other, <laughs> but I almost got them because I was they like, were, yeah, and they that's had a, it at Halloween too. Yeah, yeah. They had spiders crawling on the walls. One thing I saw that was really cool, they actually had a projector that would project like Santa Claus. Oh, fun! Like going oh around your house or stuff like that. So there's a bunch of fun stuff you can kind of do, but so whatever your light story is, we hope you have. Have a wonderful season of light. Have a great vacation next yeah. week. We're not going to be on next week on the 27th. Yeah. Um, we're just going to have a, a repeat show. So I know you'll miss us, but it'll be awesome. Yeah. Have Thank a great you. one. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thank you, guys. Yeah.